Hello everyone, this is Michael from Blue Sky Bio. In this training tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a crown for a titanium sky base abutment. I'm using version 494 of the Blue Sky Plan software. If you're using a previous version, then download from our website at blueskybio.com or blueskyplan.com. You can also simply go to help, check for updates, and update directly from within the software. A couple of comments before we get started. Of course, exports from the Crown and Bridge module are completely free. Pointing to an STL file and or to an XML configuration file, both of those exports from the Crown and Bridge module are completely free. As well, if you like any assistance with the design and or manufacturing, go ahead and click on the Lab Pronto option and place your order there. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Crown and Bridge, select Crown for Titanium Base, the software prompts us to select the relevant data files. We have the shortcuts, desktop documents, downloads, and network on top. I'm gonna left click on the first file, hold down the shift key, left click on the last file. All of the relevant files in between are selected as well. And then click on okay to load the files into the software. We are now brought to our model alignment screen. We see uh, we see the files that we've imported. Generally, the recommendation is to select the model on which the restoration is going to be planned. Because we're missing a large amount of teeth here, I'm going to select the opposing arch. We'll be able to confirm the alignment in the next step, so it's not much of an issue. I'm going to select relevant model by left clicking and then click, click on the relevant options here for mandible, dentate, and then continue to alignment. Use your left mouse button to grab and drag and rotate the model to orient it properly as per the illustration on the we're going to be doing is placing three dots, three points that are going to be aligned to the horizontal plane of our grid. I'm going to mark the three dots according to the illustration on the top right. Hold down shift key and left click once. Left click again and third time and we see how the model is now aligned to, to the grid. We could toggle on and off the grid and modify the orientation if needed. If we need to go back and remark our dots, we have the option here as well. Clicking continue allows us to modify and fine tune that placement. So I have the widget visible on screen that I could use. I could rotate uh, slightly as well. I have the option to show all my models which appear on the screen and the other models move and are oriented as per the model that I rotated it and moved. I have options to show the grid and to show and toggle on off the widget. I think for our purposes now this is su sufficient. I'm going to go ahead and click on finish. Okay, our model editing panel is now visible on the screen. We can also see that the models have been imported and are oriented to the head on the bottom left. If we wanted to go ahead and close our models or close and then hollow them or any of the additional functionality that we have here, we could go ahead and do so. We have model manipulation as well that uh, allows us to add articulation pins. I'm not gonna get into that now. That's not the point of this training tutorial. We're gonna proceed with aligning the scan body. Before doing so, it's a good idea you could turn off any non-relevant surfaces by the surfaces panel. If any of the panels are not visible to you, then what you could do is very simply just go to the dropdown and select the relevant panel. Or another tip and trick, if you want to access the, the surfaces panel, for example, and this goes with a lot of the panels as well, just double click on the relevant item and the panel opens for you automatically. Okay, so we have our model, model visible on the screen. We're going to con click continue to scan body alignment. The message here is just, as we mentioned, to confirm that the scan body is visible and centered on screen. If you don't want to see that anymore, click don't show again. And then we're going to click OK to proceed. We have our scan body library here. We have a drop down of the various companies for which we have scan bodies. If the company you're looking for does not show up on the list, simply contact them, contact us, make an introduction. We'll take it from there and add them to the software as quickly as possible. We also have a button here to use abutment as a scan body. So 
If there wasn't a scan by in the patient's mouth, rather just the abutment, you could actually select the relevant abutment from the PubMed library and use that as the scan body. We're going to proceed now by selecting the relevant scan body that's being used. We can zoom in and out and rotate with our usual mouse functionality. But what's important here to notice is that you want to click in the same spot as where this red dot is located. Generally, the red dot is going to be positioned on a flat of the scan body or right above a flat of the scan body. So here it's showing us where we should be clicking. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK and then select that same position where the red dot was and let the software do the alignment. The next step is the software prompts us to select the relevant tooth, the relevant implant and abutment to be aligned with that scan body. We have a variety of different teeth libraries here so you could go through them and see which one is uh, most relevant for your case, which one you want to select. Let's just go ahead with uh, teeth caps for now. We have the general size of the tooth that should be placed, small, medium, and large. You'll be able to modify that later as well. And you should click and select the relevant implant that was used and the relevant abutment. Then click OK and Let's take our tooth and click OK. The software now aligns a tooth, implant, and abutment. You know, let's change the model color. Simply click on the color, select a different color um, so we could see our abutment as well. Here we can see the abutment, the scan body, the implant, and the tooth. Before we proceed, let's just take a look and confirm our scan body alignment. I'm going to do that. Let's hide the tooth. I'm going to click on the tooth icon to hide the tooth. And we could zoom in here and look how those inner circles of the scan bodies are aligned via the vertical axis of the implant. I think the alignment here is quite good. I don't see how we can move our scan body in any direction. Also, if I take a look at the flats of that scan body, I could see that the scan body that we aligned to the model um, is visible on all three sides. So again, I'm not sure if there's any modification that needs to be done here. If we did want to modify the placement, then we could simply click on the scan body, use the widget to move in any direction or to rotate. You could also use the arrows on your keyboard to nudge the scan body in any direction. Okay, at this point, I'm going to continue to crown design. You are able to modify the tooth and the shape and at this point, but I think it's better doing it in the crown module. We have more capabilities and functionality for this purpose over there. So I'm going to select, let's make the tooth visible. Okay, let's actually switch our model. Now we go to your teeth edit panel and use and use our widget and our editing design tools to place to place and shape our crown so resizing rotating rotating via the widget very simple moving via the arrows general resizing just grab those nodes those circles um, and resize accordingly. Okay, we also have our editing tools. I'm not going to get into it in detail at this point, but uh, let's go ahead and continue uh, fine tuning our our design and our placement here. What we could also do is you can right click on the model and click toggle transparency. Then you're able to see through the model. We could also turn on uh, closeness. We could check the closeness box and the software shows us in red our intersections. We could use our global geometry tra uh, transform, our local geometry transform, 
um, again, to edit, we could really spend time designing a beautiful uh, tooth here if we want to make those modifications. We do want to deal with any situations where we see the titanium base uh, protruding. We also want to make sure there's sufficient material uh, that when we do create the crown, which is going to, we're going to do in just a second, that we have uh, minimal thickness. Let's add some material over here. Left mouse button while holding down shift and we're just clicking and we're adding some material. We could also use local geometry transform, uh, which I like. You could, let's make the tool a little bit bigger and you could just grab part of the tooth and just drag it in the direction that you like. If you did anything and you want to undo it, like I'm not too pleased with how this came out, just click undo or control Z on your keyboard and then you could undo that. Okay, I've used the tools a bit more. I think for our purposes, we could continue. If it's a real case, obviously, you could spend some more time perfecting this. Um, so let's go ahead now and switch to our restoration design panel. Let's just orient this generally the correct way. Okay, restoration design panel, crown on a tie base, which is what we're doing, maxilla, confirm the settings here, mandible, crown, tie base and we could select the opposing arch and then we're going to click start. We have a very simple and short five step process to turn the tooth into a crown. The first step is the path of insertion. I'm going to set in insertion direction from the view and then click OK. We can now define the proximal areas. If you're happy with your previously designed and positioned crown, then you don't even need to do this. Just click do not modify crown shape or placement and then go ahead and click on next. If you would like the software to um, attempt to resize based on the, the approximal areas, then just hold down the shift key, use your left mouse button to paint here the adjacent teeth, and then uh, click next. Okay, the software places an initial suggestion for a margin curve that we could start working with. We could also click project margin, which will project the margin based on the size and the positioning of the tooth that was placed. If we want to obviously modify and improve this, it's very simple, hold down the shift key and use your left mouse button to just draw that curve how you like it to go. We also have the option, you could simply click clear margin, hold down the shift key, and place dots along that uh, margin that you like to draw. The software connects the dots and draws the margin curve. When you get to that last dot, just continue and drag that into the first dot to close the circle. If you wanna make any modifications, then once again, hold down shift and just draw with your left mouse plane. Okay, once we're pleased with our margin curve, simply click next. What we're going to do now is we're going to modify, if needed, or just approve the connection between uh, the crown and the titanium base. So we could grab and drag any of these nodes in any direction. We could also use the sliders that we have here to modify the connection, the contour, uh, minimal thickness and whatever other settings that we will like. Let's just lower this a bit. Um, and if we like to create a screw channel, then make sure the create, crew, uh, create crown screw channel box is, is selected. I'm gonna go ahead and click on next. Okay, we're at the last step of the process. The software is showing us in red our intersections. We could go ahead and toggle on the opposing arch as well. We could see here how it's uh, protruding slightly or intersecting slightly. We could use our design tools um, at this point if we would like to uh, add or remove material. 
I'm holding down the to remove to remove some material, holding down the control key and my left mouse button. Um, we could do this from any side, any direction. We could use our smooth and local deform as well. Once that is done, if you would like the software to cut the intersections, then leave the checkboxes checked. If you're fine with the design, position, size, and intersections, then you can uncheck those checkboxes. Let's turn off the posing. And once we are happy, then we're going to click next. So this is our final, we just did our final stage, five of five. And the software has created our crown. Let's take a look before we export it. Let's just take a look at it. First of all, in the surfaces panel, we can now see that we have an extra new surface. This is our designed crown. It starts with a D indicating that it's designed. We have our original uh, tooth that we placed as well. So if you wanted to redo the process or modify the process, it's very easy to do and you can work off of uh, the tooth that was positioned and created. And then we have our designed surface, which is our new surface. Let's toggle off uh, the models. Let's uncheck show implants for a second. So this is our designed uh, crown. If we did want to make any further modifications, and once again, we have our editing tools available here, but I think we're good for now. Let's just show the export process. So I could go ahead and click the export button. I could also ac access our file export data as always. If I click export, and again, these exports from Crown and Bridge are completely free. So here are some of our options. We have the quality of the data file that's being exported, STL. So we have standard high and very high. Standard or high, totally sufficient. Uh, we have a list of our surfaces. So if we wanted to export anything else, we could check the checkbox. And our DZ, our D file here is our designed crown. The export column is to export to STL. The CAM column is to also and or export to an XML configuration file for printing. Uh, sorry for milling, not printing. The STL files for printing. So I'm going to select both options. We have automatically activated this option to export separated files to a folder. So just to explain that very quickly, if you're just exporting one file, then you could toggle that on or off, and then you could just decide where you're saving that particular file. If you're exporting multiple files, then it will be toggled on by default. And the idea is very simple. Um, and it, the idea is just to export the multiple files to the same folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and click export. The software asks us for a location for where we would like to save that. I'm gonna make a, a folder on my desktop, new folder exported sky crown and click OK. The folder selected, click OK. Exports complete. OK, here's the folder that we just created, exported sky crown. I could open it up and here we see the two files. We have our uh, STL file and we have our construction file, the XML file for milling. Okay, here is our designed crown. Okay, this video took a bit longer than expected as, as I was um, explaining step by step. When you make your first crown or two, it will take some uh, playing with, getting used to the process flow, getting used to the software. After you do it once or twice, you'll be designing your crowns in no time.